singing of a sweet high voice. Forget your father, come with me now, Prince Ferdinand, and walk along the yellow sand. Ferdinand seemed to be caught up in a dream. Without a word, he stood and followed where the aerial's glimmering lights led him. When the young prince was close by, Prospero touched Miranda on the shoulder, releasing her from the spell. Instantly she woke, and the first thing she saw was Ferdinand. Is this a spirit, father? she asked. No, my child. It is a man of flesh and blood like you and me, Prospero told her. But I thought all men had white hair and beards like yours, Miranda exclaimed. Prospero smiled, and he gave a sign to Ariel. Then the lights vanished, and Ferdinand's trance was broken. He saw Miranda. Am I still dreaming, he whispered. Is this a vision? I am no vision, sir, Miranda said. I am as real as you are, if you are indeed real. She reached out her hand. Ferdinand reached out his, and their fingertips touched. I saw in the stars that you were meant for each other, Prospero said softly. Your love will undo all evil done by hatred. Miranda and Ferdinand heard nothing of this. Ariel, said Prospero, find King Alonso and bring my brother Antonio. And when you do. On another part of the beach, two sailors swayed across the sand. One was Trinculo, a thin man with ginger hair and a freckled face. And his companion was Stefano, who had a stomach as round as a watermelon. They were so drunk that he didn't notice that Caliban was behind them. Gentle gods, Caliban cried. Did you come from the sky to save me? He thinks we're gods, Trinculo giggled. That's right, we're gods from the moon, Stefano said to Caliban. Save me, Caliban begged. Save me from the wicked enchanter, and I will give you all his treasure and be your servant forever. Enchanter, said Trinculo, turning pale. Courage, Trinculo. Stefano murmured. And what kind of treasure is it, good monster? Gold, said Caliban, and silver, and many jewels. Pirates, enchanters, it's all the same to me, he boasted. Take me to the villain. I'll carve him into thin slices. Caliban led the way along the jungle track to Prospero's cave. Suddenly a pack of savage black dogs with red eyes and slavering fangs appeared. The dogs started to run after the intruders. Trinculo and Stefano turned and ran screaming into the jungle, with Caliban close behind. King Alonso and Antonio were wandering through the jungle. They were desperate with thirst and hunger. Their fine clothes hung around them in tatters. Alonso felt really sad because he thought that his son Ferdinand was dead. I can go no further, Antonio wrote. I will wait here. I will wait until death puts an end to my misery. Just a little further, my lord, he said. I see a clearing not far ahead. Perhaps we will find a spring of fresh water there. Then the two men stumbled towards the edge of the clearing. Like a mirage, in the middle of the clearing stood a long table, piled with food and drink, golden platters of carved meats, whole roasted fowl, baskets of bread and golden jugs of wine. Alonso and Antonio hurried towards it. But before they could reach the feast, Ariel appeared. He hovered over the table in the shape of a harpy monster, with a human head and the body of a gigantic eagle. Foul spirit, why do you torment us? Antonio said. For your betrayal of your brother Prospero and niece Miranda, Ariel said. You and King Alonso set them in a boat and left them to the mercy of the ocean. Prepare yourself for your punishment. Alonso and Antonio stared in amazement because the spirit knew their terrible secret. They expected the harpy to tear them into pieces, but instead it faded. The two men fell into a waking sleep and heard a voice. Come, it said, follow, follow. From all over the island, the crew of the ship came to gather on the beach near Prospero's cave. Magic drew them there. The sailors rejoiced to see friends. Was the storm only a dream, or were they dreaming now? Because there, was their, because there was their ship, undamaged, anchored, close to the shore. Ariel brought Alonso and Antonio to the mouth of Prospero's cave and broke their trance. Alonso gasped when Ferdinand and Miranda stepped out of the darkness, hand in hand. 
What wonderful new world is this, he wondered. The world that will be made when we return to Naples and our children are joined in marriage, said a voice. Alonso and Antonio turned and saw Prospero standing behind them. Let our old hate be ended by their young love, Alonso, Prospero said. He came forward and placed his hand on Antonio's shoulder. I forgive you, brother, he said. We will rule Milan together and end our days in peace. Now go down to the shore and get ready to leave this island forever. Are you coming, father? asked Miranda. In a moment, my child, Prospero said. He waited till he was alone and then whispered, Ariel? Ariel was too excited to hold one shape. He turned into a hummingbird, then a butterfly, then a winged unicorn. I finally burned my books of magic and my wizard's stick, Prospero said. You are free to go, my Ariel, but I will miss you. And I will miss you, dear master, said Ariel. But look for me in springtime blossom, or when summer breeze stirs your curtain, or when winter stars shine bright. Until then, farewell. Farewell, sweet spirit, said Prospero. The ship began to glide away, and Caliban came out of his hiding place in the jungle. He danced on the beach. I am the king of this island, the king.